Sexism is a major issue, especially in the STEM fields where careers are still highly dominated by men. So what can we all do to improve this, not just for our generation, but for the ones that follow? I know a little bit of a cop-out, there's no straightforward answer. Sexism is a deeply societal issue, and to solve it involves a thorough clean of our society's beliefs and expectations. However, there are steps that each of us can take towards tangible and meaningful change. This is where an engineering trick can help us out, the engineering design process. The process outlines seven steps engineers take to attack any design problem. And the process doesn't step, stop after the seventh step, but only restarts. Let's dig into it. The first step in the process is ask. Every engineer needs to be inquisitive, but so does anyone attempting to create meaningful change. Um, before we approach any issue, we have to understand that issue. And the best way to start that is to ask someone about their experiences with that issue. In response to this first step, let me tell you a story. In ninth grade, I joined my school's robotics team. It was the natural choice of extracurriculars for me. I was inquisitive and loved building and problem solving and was beyond excited at the chance to learn some new engineering skills. What met me was not what I expected. Instead of a fun educational culture, I floundered and developed a, a serious imposter syndrome. The upperclassmen I met were condescending and preached innate engineering talent, which convinced me I wasn't good enough or smart enough or engineering enough to meaningfully contribute. In those short months, my life plans and dreams did a complete 180, and I turned away from engineering and robotics and turned towards finding a new passion, one that I felt I could meaningfully pursue. Then, in 10th grade, we still couldn't return to the lab because of COVID, and we didn't build a full-scale robot. So I turned towards physics as my passion of choice, convincing myself it was something I loved. Finally, in 11th grade, we returned to the lab. However, all of the condescending, innately gifted upperclassmen from before were gone, leaving behind a team that knew next to nothing and, crucially, carried over little from the previous generations. No more condescension, no more superiority complex, instead a chance to build a more inclusive team culture. That was the year that I was offered a leadership position on the team, and although I was still living under the weight of the former leader's words, I was determined to create a cultural shift on the team towards a strong, safe, and supportive environment. And this is my story. It has shaped the way I interact and communicate and the way that I approach robotics. When I think about solving the issue of sexism in the STEM world, I reflect back on my own stories and the experiences I've heard from others. And these stories and experiences shape my response to the issue, showing just how important the ask step of the process is. The second step in the process is research. Engineers do research to examine the, engineering, the design problem in more depth and to learn more about the current solutions out there. We can do research the same way, to learn about the greater context of the issue we're trying to solve. Let's dive into some of the stats surrounding gender diversity in the STEM field. Although the wage gap is remarkably small for engineers and other STEM careers, only about four cents different for robotics engineering, which encapsulates primarily mechanical, software, and electrical engineering, the only about 7% of robotics engineers are women, and that number can be as low as 1% for more specialized jobs, such as senior electrical engineer. This is according to Zipia. Additionally, according to the Pew Research Center, women in STEM careers are more likely than women in other careers to indicate that they have faced gender discrimination in the workplace. That's about 50% to 41%. All of these stats show that sexism isn't an issue uh, isolated to robotics teams or even high school in general. Instead, research highlights just how widespread the issue is. And the third step in the process is imagine. Now, engineers use this step to brainstorm all of the different solutions to a given problem. But I'd urge us to take that a little bit farther. Now that we have a perspective on the issue and some research surrounding it, empathy must come next in our understanding of the issue itself. Empathy goes beyond a simple understanding, but involves really imagining what it would be like to be in a situation, putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Empathy must form the backbone of our response in any issue, and especially in the issue of sexism in the STEM fields. And the fourth step in the process 
is plan. Uh, engineers use this step to limit down their ideas from the previous step to one or two main designs which they'll move forward with. Um, and it can be used the same way for us. So planning is really important because now that we understand the issue, it's important not to rush forward all at once, but to carefully consider how we move forward before we do. In dark side, this means, you know, thinking about all of the things that we have used before and coming up with new strategies, methods, and tasks to create a more inclusive environment. The fifth step in the process is build and create. And in a sense, we're doing the same sort of thing, building an inclusive environment. Now that we have our understanding of the problem and we have a plan of how to move forward, we must bring our problem solving into the real world. We must stand up for our peers, speak out against injustice, and support those affected by those injustices. When combined with the sixth step, testing, ensuring what we build works and getting feedback, we arrive at the majority of implementation. And it's these steps that Darkside worked most on last year. Along with the help of my co-captains and several other members of the team, we worked to create, correct the use of certain languages, create more inclusive spaces on the team, and ensure everyone had the knowledge and support to move forward in the season before the season started. Not everything went perfectly on the first try round. Um, there were several things we did that we needed to correct. For example, we started having meetings at the end of each practice to ensure everyone was on the same page. This didn't work because not everyone was still there by the end of practice, so we shifted those to the beginning of practices and it worked way better. Um, and which leads us into the seventh step, and the final step, improve. The process is never over. Uh, when we build a robot, we learn things along the way and we implement next time round. When uh, facing any issue, um, especially sexism in the STEM fields, our response the first time round isn't going to be perfect. What is per uh, important though, is that we each recognize our own mistakes and limitations and work to correct those along the way. As the season wrapped up last year, um, we finished a much better team than we started. I noticed us working better together, laughing more, hanging out in the lab just because we wanted to see each other. And at the end of the season, one of the freshmen let it slip that she looked up to me. And I still think about this. I am so proud to have had a step in making that inclusive environment that I so desperately wanted and needed my freshman year and that everyone on the team deserves. We finished a much better team because we applied the engineering design process not only to building our robot, but to building our team. And as we move forward into the next season, we will face a whole new set of challenges. But because we will continue to use this engineering design process for our team and the robot, I am confident to say we're going to have an amazing year. Darkside has given me a family, a home, and a community. I've realized that physics isn't my passion, but Robotics is my dream, and that dream is achievable, despite what my freshman year on the team told me. It's achievable through the good actions of good community members working to create inclusive spaces. It's these inclusive spaces that are so important for our daily lives, because everyone should have a chance to do what they love. Thank you.